powdered alcohol. Amazing stuff, right? Drunkenness is only a plastic pouch and powder away. At Courtside Grill, customers were also curious about liquor in a powdered form. An innovative man by the name of Mark Phillips has created something known as powdered alcohol. Stores like Gateway Liquors that were inundated with phone calls this morning when news of palcohol went public. It can make some incredible cocktails. It's called palcohol and you're supposed to mix with water to get cocktails like a lemon drop, mojito, and powderita. And you could even snort it. It can be snorted and that it'll get you drunk super fast. The US has approved a powdered alcohol you can sniff to become instantaneously drunk. Oh, and yeah, just like the thorium powered car, it set off my bullshit alarms the second I heard it. And I'll tell you why. And this really does highlight the dangers of having people who really don't understand the first thing about science covering things like this and passing one of the dumbest ideas in history off as a, a really clever idea. But now kids have alcohol. It's a new and improved way to get drunk that could hit the shelves later this year. And last week, the news spread that alcohol received its federal approval, which caused a mad frenzy, as you might imagine. So what is the uh, disturbing truth about powdered alcohol? Scientists behind the product have turned liquid alcohol into a powder that you can mix with water to make your drink. You see, the first thing you've got to understand is that alcohol, sometimes called ethanol or 1-hydroxyethane, is a molecule. And it's notable for its intoxicating effects on certain carbon-based life forms. And like water, it's a molecule. Indeed, water and ethanol in many ways have very similar properties. They're both clear, colorless liquids at room temperature. And they're both fairly good at dissolving stuff. In this sense, when someone says powdered alcohol, it's like saying powdered water. Sure, technically it does exist, but first of all, you'd have to freeze the water to make ice and then grind it up. Oh, cracked alcohol. Powdered alcohol. <laughs> and at the end of the day, what would be the point? Especially seeing as ice melts pretty quickly on a warm summer's day. I mean, how long do you think powdered alcohol is going to last when it freezes at 100 degrees Celsius below the freezing point of water? That's a temperature so low that at that temperature, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere would solidify. But like I say, what would be the point? If you get a kilo or a pound of alcohol, it's going to create a kilo or a pound of alcohol powder. It's still a kilo or a, a pound of alcohol. Really, that's the simplest I can make it. If I get one kilo of alcohol and freeze it, you're just going to get one kilo of alcohol. Well, what was the point of that? That is, if you wanted to uh, sneak alcohol into a game, Originally, they openly highlighted the fact that you can sneak it into concerts. Just like if you wanted to sneak water in, by far the easiest way of doing it would just be to take the pure or nearly pure liquid, say something like Everclear 95%. It's just the most efficient way of moving the liquid around. It's just the pure liquid. Now, it turns out that many were covering this powdered alcohol didn't really mean alcohol that was being powdered, they mean alcohol on a powdery support. A powder that obviously doesn't actually dissolve that well in the alcohol, but will dissolve in water. And then you just use that powder to absorb the alcohol. Now, as a way of transporting alcohol, this is just dumb. So on who you ask, I think for most people, regular liquid booze is probably fine, but it is a solution for people who want to take it on the go without carrying heavy bottles. Think hikers, backpackers, and people who want to slip it in their drink at lunch. No, Lacey, this is just dumb because of the weight of the absorbent media and the space it takes up. Look, here I have two identical glasses. They hold the same volume. Now, to a first degree approximation, molecules are like these identical beads and they pack together to form the liquid. And that's essentially what the bulk liquid is. And it's the same deal with alcohol. That is, anything that you add to the pure alcohol will just dilute it. So let's represent the powdery support as these marbles. And so you can see that the powdery support takes up about half of the space. And so now the same volume glass only holds half the amount of alcohol. 
So in terms of moving the smallest amount of weight or volume around, pure alcohol is just the most efficient way of doing this. I mean, that's why we call it pure alcohol. Indeed, the powdered alcohol claims to be about 50% by weight alcohol. Weight for weight, that means that this is about as an efficient way of transporting alcohol as strong vodka. Or seeing as their powder is very fluffy, it's only 12% alcohol by volume. And of course, they sell it by volume, which means volume for volume, pint for pint, liter for liter, or whatever. That makes it about as an efficient way of transporting alcohol as wine. Basically, this is the favorite thing that the food industry likes to sell you. Air. And this is only a good way of transporting alcohol if you're an idiot. But it is a solution for people who want to take it on the go without carrying heavy bottles. Think hikers, backpackers, and people who want to slip it in their drink at lunch. Because it offers no tangible advantages for transporting alcohol over, say, whiskey. As for snorting the stuff, it can be snorted and that it'll get you drunk super fast. The US has approved a powdered alcohol you can sniff to become instantaneously drunk. But you've got to be crazy. Volume for volume, the stuff has about the same alcohol content as wine. That is, to get the same alcohol content as, say, a glass of wine, you would have to snort a wine glass full of this white powder. It can be snorted, and that it'll get you drunk super fast. The US has approved a powdered alcohol you can sniff to become instantaneously drunk. I mean, let me put this into perspective. There aren't many drugs you can snort, because basically, your respiratory system is meant to breathe. It's not designed to absorb powders. So for instance, with cocaine, the amount typically snorted is about a tenth of a gram. Snorting a wine glass sized volume simply so you can get the alcohol content of a glass of wine. <laughs> Call me crazy, but there are easier ways to imbibe alcohol. Speaking of slipping things in drinks, that's one of my concerns with powdered alcohol. It's actually a little easier to abuse. As for slipping it into someone's drink, that's just face palm stupid at its best. In its solid form, it's only got about the same alcohol content as vodka. You would literally have to put spoon after spoon of this stuff into someone's drink, then wait for the matrix to dissolve and hope it didn't taste funny. I mean, wouldn't it just have been easier to put a shot of vodka in there? Sorry, but if you're the sort of person who is worried about powdered alcohol being used to spike drinks, you should probably also be terribly worried about the horrible spoon hazard faced by our children. Because spoons could be used as a murder weapon. Roxley! I'm gonna cut your heart out with a spoon! Or that water faucets should have warning labels on them telling you that if you hold your head under there for too long, you could drown. Powdered alcohol is just as stupid an idea as absorbing alcohol into maxi pads and then calling it solid alcohol. Indeed, solid alcohol would be a far better way of transporting the uh, source than powdered alcohol. How could I possibly know that, I hear you ask? Well, for this one, I had to overcome the typical male reaction to seeing a maxi pad, as shown here in this body form commercial. In the past, we've tried to be more honest in our approach. In the 1980s, we ran a series of focus groups to help us gauge the public's reaction to periods. The cramps, the mood swings, the insatiable hunger. You see, it turns out your typical maxi pad weighs about 10 grams, which means that you would only need to absorb about 10 grams of alcohol. That's less than half a shot glass full of pure alcohol to have a comparable alcohol composition to powdered alcohol. But then it occurred to me while I was going through this hardly surreal process of pouring the alcohol into the maxi pad, just to see if I could hit the alcohol composition of powdered alcohol, just how much alcohol could a maxi pad take? Well, for this I went over to whiskey, and it just took shot after shot. Indeed, had we been doing a drinking contest, this maxi pad would have had me under the table. Had this been pure alcohol, by the time I'd finished, it would have been about 80% by weight alcohol. Now that was really sourced. Plus with solid alcohol, if you want to make a cocktail, all you gotta do is squeeze to get your pure alcohol back and mix it with whatever you want. You can't do that with powdered alcohol. You can reuse solid alcohol, 
not so sure I'd recommend it, but you could. You can't reuse powdered alcohol. And best of all, you don't have to eat the bloody support matrix, which you do with powdered alcohol, which is almost half the weight of the product. Now, my guess is that the support is likely some sort of exotic sugar, maybe cyclodextrin. Either way, the support matrix is likely to be significantly more expensive than the actual alcohol. So what the hell was the point of that? It just gets dumber and dumber. This is now the equivalent of transporting your alcohol in a gold-plated maxi pad. I mean, having none of you munchkins heard of the technological wonder of the polyethylene terephthalate bottle. Look, the great thing about alcohol is it's a clear, colourless liquid. You can mix it with Coke, and it looks like Coke. You can mix it with orange juice, and it still looks like orange juice. You can mix it with water, and it looks like water. Alcohol is simply the easiest liquid to move around discreetly. Sure, you could make your own powdered alcohol. It's simple. You just take about two grams of alcohol of the 100% variety and add five grams of icing sugar. And bada bing, bada boom, instant powdered alcohol. But then again, what would be the point? You basically added three times as much weight to your alcohol and it's now two thirds by mass sugar. You, so here's how it really went down. Mm -hmm. uh, the alcohol companies, which have a great deal of money and leverage, called their local politicians or their national politicians, probably more accurately, uh, and said, yeah, we're going to need that powder to go away. Mm -hmm. Okay, So take it easy with all that uh, mm -hmm. approval nonsense. Okay. And then it turns out, lo and behold, my God, they needed to do more research before approving that label, and they realized that after they yeah. had made the approval. Now, sure, I would agree that there are certain points where lobby groups lobby for their interest and against the public interest. But if you're seeing that here, you're just looking too hard for what you want to see. There are a lot of corporate interests here that are probably not too happy with this invention. I mean, this is just a dumb idea from start to finish. And when I say dumb, I mean storing alcohol in gold plated maxi pad style dumb. I mean banning spoons because they could be murder weapons style dumb. That being said, just because this is an outrageously stupid idea, that doesn't mean that it can't be successful. Oh, and one last thing of interest. Bacardi 151 is a frequent travel partner of mine. By composition, it's about three quarters by weight alcohol. That's kind of interesting to me because it's almost exactly the same composition as the rocket fuel of the V2 rocket. And the reason I take it with me so often is it has many purposes. You can use it to clean the grime off your computer. You can use it to make pretty blue fires. You can use it to sterilize wounds. And even at a push, drink the stuff if the mood takes you. That is weight for weight, volume for volume. This is a far more effective and useful way of transporting alcohol around than trying to absorb it on some sort of powdery support. Just saying.